What does the Bible actually say about sex before marriage? Stick around to the very end because I need to share something really important with you. Sex before marriage is a sin. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. And you have to take very seriously what God's Word says about sex before marriage. And there's probably no place in the Bible more serious than 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. So the Bible doesn't actually say anywhere that sex before marriage is a sin. Are you sure about that? You might be able to find that implied in a couple of different places, but it never comes right out and says it. Well, even if it is just implied, that's still relevant, right? And what this creator is alluding to is a vice list that Paul makes right in between where Paul says, don't take one another to court and don't sleep with prostitutes. And here Paul says, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then Paul does get into sexual ethics. He says fornicators are doing the wrong thing. Idolaters are doing the wrong thing. People who commit adultery are doing the wrong thing. But never in that whole list does Paul say, hey, don't have sex before marriage. You might be able to fit it into fornicators. But again, it, he doesn't make that term clear. Okay, you can look at every translation of fornication. and It always comes back to you, people who have sex that are not married. It's very understandable. Like, Paul didn't need to define the word uh, in that context because uh, it was very obvious what he was talking about. Or at least it should be. Then, this creator goes over to 1 Thessalonians and says something kind of interesting. He pulls from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and he says that God wants you to abstain from fornication. Fair enough. Abstain from fornication. Again, this term fornication, porneia, that Paul uses is kind of a catch-all term for him for any sex that he thinks is out of bounds. Sex that he thinks is out of bounds? I see what's going on here. It's the old Paul had his own beliefs and hobby horses and included that in the Bible. Now we got to deal with it. I see people make this distinction in the Bible in order to absolve themselves of some of the more challenging verses in the New Testament. They say, oh, well, you know, Jesus didn't say that. So is it really that relevant? I mean, they got their own stuff going on. You know, there's apostles. They probably went off, you know, went off the deep end in some areas. But the truth is after Jesus ascended, with the addition of Paul, the apostles were sent out to start these churches, to care for the Christian community, to disciple, to evangelize. And so when they were writing these things, it wasn't just all about like their own personal hobby horses. It was God inspiring these words in order that they would be relevant for us too today in our situation. So to dispose of them is to dispose of God's word to us. She's holding her own standard to the Bible saying, well, if it doesn't say it this way, then, then it doesn't say it at all, which isn't true. And he never really defines those terms. And so even here, he doesn't say, don't have sex before marriage. In fact, the end game for him in all of this seems to be a kind of shaming of his Gentile readers, Gentiles who've become a part of this Jesus movement. And he says, you really, you've got to abstain from fornication. You should not act in sinful lust like the Gentiles do who do not know God. Now his audience here is primarily Gentile, but he's engaging in this kind of stereotyping of Gentiles that Jews at this time did, where he thinks, gosh, those Gentiles, they are crazy. They will have sex with anything and everything. And he really wants his audience not to do whatever he might have in mind as out of bound sex. And again, he doesn't define that. This is the verse that everybody's referring to. For this is the will of God for you, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality or fornication, uh, that you, each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. This is pretty wild to me. Uh, Paul is just pointing out the reality of the situation. Yeah, the Gentiles who do not know God, who do not have God's law, who have not followed you know, the, the law of Moses, since since the Old Testament, right? Those who do not have it, they're caught up in pagan religions. And yes, they're going to they have no boundaries on sexuality. So yeah, Paul's saying, hey, don't be like those guys over there who do not know God. He's not talking about the Gentiles who have now come into the faith, who have, uh, you know, trusted in Jesus. He's talking about the ones that are still out there and, and trusting in these kind of pagan idols and, and worshiping and, and conducting their sexuality in any way that they please. So it's not necessarily about shaming either. It's a correcting word and admonishment to seek God's will 
in this area of their lives. But I can kind of understand this lady's perspective because these days, any kind of correcting word or, or judgment saying these people are doing something wrong is seen as hateful. In order to love somebody well, you're not going to stay silent as they're going in a direction that's going to be harmful for them. This is cowardice camouflaged as compassion. Um, but I find it interesting because the stereotyping that Paul does here is really similar to the stereotyping that this creator does when he says, I know that culture is telling you that if it feels good, you should just do it. I don't know that our culture is saying that, but it is a fun stereotype to bring up. So is premarital sex a sin? It doesn't say so here. That pretty much sums up progressive Christianity. We don't know. <laughs> we don't, we're not sure. We don't know. Is culture saying if it feels good, do it? I know a lot of people believe that, but I can guarantee that the culture isn't saying, let's follow what God has to say. Like I said at the beginning, there's something essential that I need to share with you as we're having this conversation about having sex outside of marriage. When progressives talk about the Bible's perspective on sex outside of marriage, they, they fight it. And one of the primary reasons that they do this is because they say it's a shaming. It's understandable that they hone into this because shame is naturally present when we step outside of of God's design. But instead of trying to deal with the shame head on, what they will do is they'll excuse or justify the sin itself. But ultimately, what we need to do as Christians is recognize the forgiveness and redemption that Jesus offers. That's truly the good news of the gospel. I want you to know this. If you've had sex and, and you're not married, and maybe you were a Christian, maybe you weren't a Christian, I want you to know that through Christ, through his redemption, through his grace, you can be forgiven, that you are forgiven if you are in Christ, that even now you could experience freedom from that shame and, and any kind of remaining guilt, that heaviness on your shoulders that maybe you've carried around for a while. You understand, okay, yeah, Jesus saved me, but I still feel dirty or I still feel like a second-class Christian or I still feel stained. You need to recognize the truth of what happened when God saved you. Past, present, and future stain washed away. You are clean in his sight, clothed in his righteousness, a child of God. God loves you and his love is a gift. It's something that none of us deserve, but don't for a second think that because of what you've done in your past, God couldn't love you. It's not true. That's a lie from the evil one to get you to distance yourself from the only one who knows you fully and yet loves you completely. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. You are a huge blessing. And if you want to participate in our Discord or our uh, Zoom chats or um, the exclusive videos that I put out on there, hit the link in my description and uh, sign up today. Thanks guys again and I'll see you guys next time. God bless.